Come on, bird. Off you go. Show us again. Open your wings. I could just start clapping wildly if I wanted it really to take off, but I'm not going to do that. That'd be nasty, wouldn't it, Fergus? Mm -hmm. Charles, you say, why do the storks have such large beaks? Well, there are probably a few reasons. Their beaks are quite nicely designed for scavengers. I mean, they're not only meat scavengers. They'll eat fish. So their beaks can be used to hunt fish in the same way that most storks do. And they scavenge a lot or certainly take a lot of almost semi-dead fish, if you know what I mean. So fish that are in drying pans that are flapping about in the mud, they will take. And so their beaks are designed for that too. They're heavy enough for them to be able to break open carcasses and get into carcasses. But the disadvantage of the sort of multi-use of the stork's beak is that it doesn't have that hooked tooth that will allow them to sort of tear flesh. And, uh, yeah, so it's kind of multi-use scavenging fishing beak, but it's not very specialized for scavenging. And so while it allows the bird to take a greater variety of food, it uh, certainly reduces its ability to open up carcasses. Yeah, I think let's move on from here. Oh, there we go. It's going to take off. Come on. Come on. As the wind blows, go for it. Just waddling. We're just waddling. Don't waddle. Waddling is unbecoming. Even for a vulture. No. All right, let's move on. I want to go and see what